Guys, I want to give a quick shout out to Darkness for suggesting today's video and also Oscar Martin for suggesting the last video. Thanks, guys. So every once in a while, a case comes along that seemingly captures the attention of an entire nation. And that's certainly the case with the disappearance we're going to be talking about today. On February 9th, 2004, a college student drove her car into a snowbank on the side of the road. By the time police had arrived on the scene, she was gone. And she was never seen again. This is the disappearance of Maura Murray. Maura Murray was a UMass student when she vanished now, back in 2004. Days, well, this coming Sunday will mark 10 years since anyone has seen or she heard anything from a woman named years ago. Maura Murray. The disappearance of Maura Murray remains a mystery. <laughs> So from the outside, Maura seemed to have it all going on for her. She was a nursing student at the University of Massachusetts, and it was there that she was on the track team, the cross country team, and she even made the dean's list. Who can relate? Also, she had a long-term boyfriend with whom she planned to marry. Couple all this with the fact that she was surrounded by a solid group of friends and a family that clearly loved her. Her life appeared to be one that a lot of people would love to have. Good grades, good relationship, good friends, and a good family. She seemed to have it all going for her. But as is always the case, there's more to a person than what meets the eye. And in Maura's case, this was especially true. Now, I hate to bring up old dirt on her. Um, it feels inappropriate because I don't want to paint her out to be the villain in this scenario, because uh, she obviously wasn't. But all this information you're about to hear is relevant to figuring out what actually happened to Maura. So for that case, I had to include it. Before Maura's enrollment at UMass, she was actually a student at West Point, a prominent military school. And it was there that she actually met her boyfriend. And it was also there that she was expelled. Maura had gotten caught stealing $5 worth of makeup. Uh, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but that was enough to get her kicked out of that school. But this situation exposed a side of her that seemingly no one knew about and no one understood. A side of her that neglected laws and would eventually wind up getting her in a lot more trouble. Maura's next run-in with the law came when she was busted for credit card fraud. She was caught using a stolen credit card. But throughout this all, it was strange because Maura's family and Maura's friends never really saw this dark side of her. They all seemed to view her as perfect, which is going to come into play later. Now this credit card fraud was not her last run-in with the law. Her last run-in with the law actually took place two days before her disappearance. On the 7th of February of 2004, Maura drove her car off the road and smashed it into a guardrail. And there are two key takeaways from this situation. The first of which being, the car actually belonged to her father. And it was said that this accident reportedly cost him between $8,000 and $10,000, which is a ton of money. And the second thing is that though she wasn't arrested, the officer allegedly believed that she had been under the influence. And when later asked about it, the officer apparently said that he could have and should have arrested her, but for whatever reason, he didn't. Which kind of makes no sense, but... Yeah, I have no idea. And it was this accident where things really started to take a turn for the worst for Mora. The day after the accident, Mora emailed all her teachers and told them that she would not be attending school for the week, with her reason being that there was a death in the family. Then she cleaned out her entire dorm room, packed her stuff in the car, and drove off into the night without telling anyone where she was going. Now, it was later revealed, thanks to her search history, that Mora was actually headed for New Hampshire, and more specifically, the White Mountain National Forest. Now, the fact that she had unexplicably taken off and headed towards the mountains may sound very sketchy, and in a lot of ways it is, but the truth is that Mora was someone who really enjoyed hiking. So maybe she just wanted to get away for a little bit, go hiking in the wilderness, and be alone. But what makes it sketchy is that there hadn't actually been a death in her family. So she had lied about that. And also, if she was really going for a hike, why would she take her entire amount of belongings with her? I mean, it just makes no sense. Now, this situation only got stranger when Maura was caught on a security camera depositing basically all the money she had from an ATM. From there, she had apparently gone into a liquor store and purchased $40 worth of alcohol. And it was just hours after that purchase that Mora again crashed her car, but this time into a snowbank. Now supposedly the crash had happened at about 7.25 p.m. And just minutes later, a neighbor who had witnessed the crash called it into the police. Now, a second call was made to the police as well, but this one being at 7.43 p.m. And the call was placed by a bus driver who had actually pulled up alongside Mora's vehicle, got out, and asked her if she needed any help. 
But instead of asking for help, Mora asked for the exact opposite. She begged the man not to call the police and begged the man to just leave her alone. However, the man ended up ignoring her plea and called the police as soon as he got home. And police arrived on the scene just three minutes after he placed this phone call. But when they got up to the car, they realized that no one was in there. Mora was gone. Now, despite countless searches of the woods nearby and hundreds of volunteers searching for Mora, she was never found. It seemed like Mora had disappeared off the face of the earth. And to this day, we have no explanation as to what happened. And because of this lack of explanation, there has been endless speculation, which has led to a countless number of theories. And most of them are really dark. Now I want to add a disclaimer here that we are about to be talking about suicide and it's going to be a talking point for basically the rest of the video, but I would recommend clicking off if that's something that makes you uncomfortable. Now our first theory is that Maura Murray had committed suicide. Now I want you all to think about this. This girl is in an extremely difficult nursing program. She's juggling two jobs and a long distance relationship. She had been expelled from military school and she had had multiple run-ins with the law and at this point she was still in legal hot water. Also she had just crashed her dad's car and cost him 10 grand and now she had just crashed her own car. I mean that is some serious stress. That type of stress is unimaginable. I mean, she clearly wasn't a perfect person, but her parents seemed to think that she was, and her parents seemed to expect perfection out of her, which just adds more stress onto her. I mean, maybe she snapped. Maybe she decided that she's leaving school and she's going off into the woods to commit suicide. Or maybe she was just going off into the woods to get away from everything, and then once she crashed her car again, she decided to commit suicide. It was also reported that Mora's sleeping pills were missing from her car when police searched it. And you know what else was missing? Some of the alcohol she had bought. I mean, that combination could potentially be deadly and could be certainly used as a way of suicide. Now also, while we're on the topic of alcohol, it was said that there were multiple stains in the car that could have been wine stains, which could point to the fact that perhaps Mora was intoxicated at the time of the crash, something that she allegedly had a history of. And this could explain why she didn't want the police involved, and this could have led her to run out of her car, run into the woods, and commit suicide. There are so many things that could have just made her snap that day, which is why I personally like this theory. I hope it's not true, but it just seems so believable. And because of this, it's certainly become one of the most popular theories involving this case. But it does have its issues. For starters, police had arrived just minutes after Mora had been seen in her car. So how could she have disappeared into the woods so quickly without leaving a single trace? And when police went looking for her, how could she have avoided them? And also, if she had committed suicide, how could they have never found her body? I mean, that area was probably searched so, so, so heavily that there's no way they would have missed a body. So because of that, yes, this theory is still possible, and there's clearly a motive for it. But at the same time, where could her body have gone? I mean, because they had never found a body? I can't get on board fully with this theory. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Mora seemed to be in a very happy and healthy relationship. Well, even though it may have seemed that way, it turns out it may not have been so healthy after all. So apparently her relationship was a lot rockier than a lot of people thought. And this was a belief that was confirmed by a draft in her emails that she was supposedly going to send to her boyfriend, which detailed some of the problems they were having in their relationship. Also, there were rumors out there that people believed Mora's boyfriend was abusive and controlling. And not only this, but a man attending UMass actually claimed that he was in a relationship with Mora as well. So apparently she was in two different relationships. And this man also claimed that she was quite the flirt on the track team and that she had actually slept with a number of different people whilst in this relationship. So I understand that a lot of this is probably speculative and hopefully this wasn't really the case, but if it was, how could it have related to her disappearance? Well, think about this. Assuming all these claims are true, then what would happen if she would have gotten pregnant? What if her secret boyfriend had gotten her pregnant? I mean, that would be a bad look for her, and then she would have to tell her boyfriend, who would obviously know that it wasn't his kid because it was a long-distance relationship. I mean, geez, that would be a horrible thing to have to explain to him. And as mentioned before, there were claims that this long-distance boyfriend was actually abusive and controlling. So who knows what he would have done to her after he found this out. And not only this, but what if one of the random guys she supposedly slept with 
what if they had gotten her pregnant? Then she had to explain to both her boyfriends that she had gotten pregnant from another man. I mean, what a terrible and stressful situation. And no matter who would have gotten her pregnant in this story, the baby would be brought up in a horrible situation. And there's probably gonna be all sorts of custody issues because her father is either her secret boyfriend, her abusive boyfriend, or some random guy. So if you're Mora in this situation, what would be the best thing you could do? Well, maybe it could be to disappear. Now I saw this theory online and at first I really, I loved it. I mean, what a powerful motive for her to disappear and start a new life. The motive to protect her child and to keep that child safe no matter what. I mean, obviously a mother will go to the ends of the earth to protect her child, but then this theory came crashing down. And that's because of one simple fact, a fact that had totally slipped my mind up until now, the alcohol. If she had really disappeared to start a new life for her unborn child, then the last thing she would be doing is buying alcohol and drinking alcohol. I mean, everybody knows you're not supposed to drink when you're pregnant. So because of this, I have to say this theory doesn't make sense. But the pregnancy still is a possibility. And maybe the stress of this pregnancy could have caused her to commit suicide. But the theory that she had disappeared to protect her child is no longer one that I can even consider. So before we get into our last theory, I want to make this claim right here, right now. I want to talk about what I personally think happened and what I'm still unsure of. To me, I believe that once Mora had crashed her car, she ran off into the woods. She was stressed and she was in a horrible situation. So I really believe that she just snapped and she got out of the car and she ran off. I mean, if even half the stuff we've talked about today was true, then I would have done the same. I mean, her life was seemingly closing in on her. But it's after she leaves that car, which is where I really have no idea what happened. Could it have been suicide? Could she have started a new life? Or could it be our next theory? Our third theory is that Mora was abducted and most likely murdered. I mean, it would explain why she was never found and how she had disappeared from the area seemingly right after someone had just seen her. And maybe some helpful driver had pulled up alongside her right after the bus driver and offered to help her out and comforted her and lured her into their car and then did God knows what to her. I mean, no matter what she told the bus driver, she was in need of help. And also, if she had gotten out of her car and started running away, this theory would still make sense. I mean, she still could have been stopped by a car or by a hiker or by somebody who offered her some help, but in turn ended up kidnapping her. I mean, there are so many different scenarios where this could have happened. But if this really was the case, then where are all the suspects? Well, admittedly at first, there weren't many. But after eight years, the internet became convinced that they had found her killer. And that was thanks to this video. Okay, so what does this creepy video have to do with her disappearance? Well, first, let's take a look at the name of this account, which, by the way, this account has long since been deleted, but here was the initial name of this account. 112 Dirtbag. Now, Mora had disappeared off of Route 112, and Mora's father had gone on record and called whoever had abducted her or whoever had killed her a dirtbag. So that alone is pretty weird, but there's much more. So the video ends with the title screen, Happy Anniversary. And interestingly enough, this video was posted on February 9th, 2012, exactly eight years after Mora's disappearance, or in other words, the eighth year anniversary of her disappearance. So couple this with the fact that he is laughing at the camera and winking at the camera, it seemed clear what this video could be. I mean, it seemed like it was Mora's killer kind of mocking everyone and laughing everyone because he had gotten away with this crime. I mean, the username and the happy anniversary thing, I mean, that is just way too convenient. And that was 100% a reference to this case, clearly. Now, the identity of this person in this video was actually later discovered, and his real name is Alden Olson, and he lives in Massachusetts, where Mora had attended college. So case closed, right? Well, all these years later, and he still hasn't been arrested. And as of now, he's not even considered to be a suspect. And to make things even crazier, this was all later shockingly disproved, and it was revealed that Olsen really had nothing to do with it. And weirdly enough, this guy actually has a blog, and he kind of talks about the case, and it seems like he's actually trying to solve the case at the same time. So I guess Olsen's motive for posting this video was to push this case back into the public eye, which I guess is a good motive. I mean, 
you couldn't have found a better way to do it. So with Olsen out as a suspect, there was one other suspect who hasn't been named as far as I know, but despite the lack of a name, there are a lot of people out there who believe this person actually did commit this crime. And that's because a random man had come forward and said that he was suspicious that his brother might have something to do with Mora's disappearance. And this mysterious man even turned over a knife that he believed Mora was murdered with. Now this information was given to Mora's father, who then sent the knife off to the police, explained to them the situation, and wanted to get the knife tested. However, the knife was never seen again, which is very weird. Now, Mora's father did not give up on this lead despite this knife miraculously disappearing. So he actually hired a team of private investigators to search this person's house, which had recently become vacant. And apparently inside this house, a cadaver dog had sensed that there was at one point a body in the closet. And these cadaver dogs are typically very accurate. Now, small traces of blood were also found inside of this closet, but they were unable to confirm if it was even human blood. So though this mysterious suspect seemed like a promising lead, without a body and without a confession or more information coming forward, it kind of seems like a dead end. Now, there was one more recent development on where Mora's body could have ended up. Just off of Route 112 was a house that Mora's father was initially suspicious of, and that was because it was in such close proximity to where she disappeared. However, the homeowner never even answered the door for police when they went to go investigate. And because they had no evidence linking this house to the disappearance, uh, police really couldn't do anything. That was until that house also became vacant some years later. Now, just recently, this house took on a new owner, and this new owner actually allowed police to go search the house. Now, more cadaver dogs were brought in, and two different cadaver dogs actually sensed that there was a body that had been buried in the basement. And they both alerted on the same exact spot. So investigators used some like sonar technology and discovered that some of the ground below there was actually disturbed in years prior. And Mora's father was convinced that this was their big break. I mean, the man was confident that if it wasn't his daughter, then it was somebody else who was buried down in that location. To dig up whoever is there. There's a human body, a dead body, a dead person there. The odds are, I think that it's my daughter, but it's somebody's. And for months, people thought this until finally they were able to excavate the area. And here's what they found. David, now at five, a new search for a missing college student turns up no evidence. The disappearance of Maura Murray remains a mystery. Now, this is just such a devastating blow to this case. Like, I can't even begin to explain it. Once again, lured by the hope of closure, Maura's family was let down once more. But if there's one thing that I am sure of, it's that people don't just disappear. And as long as this case stays in the public eye, and as long as we keep talking about it, then there's still some hope that Morris family can someday get closure. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you soon with another one.